okay welcome this is the last part of this video series e-commerce uh, website okay and this part i'll be walking you through on the payment method all right using paypal paypal smart payment button i've done a tutorial on how you can be able to integrate paypal smart payment button server side integration so uh, i won't be going into detail into that okay so if you have not if you don't know how to integrate paypal make sure you check out my description you see a link there and go and watch that video right i'll be only be walking you through on on how the payment uh flows works and how you can be able to get to the success page all right so when we head back here um this is the payment button that echoes out if the arch delivery method is not empty if that variable is not empty that is why we can be able to see the paper smart payment button all right so this is the buttons the scripts which was gotten from paper okay i just did some changes in the layout the color and the shape all right um so what we'll be concentrating here is this field so this is the value this is where we enter the amount which that we want the user to make payments of okay so remember uh, what we did if it's not empty the virtual underscore price i've explained this in the last series okay make sure you watch that if you don't understand this so this will dynamically echo the price the, the total price we want the user the customer to make payments of okay it only echo the virtual price if the virtual price is not empty and the final price and the former price that which was inserted when we redeemed our voucher code is equal to what the former price if they are the same they will not echo those else will not echo the final price okay so that works dynamically then on a on approve function if all is well this is where the user will be redirected to where the transaction completed.php file. So this is, this is the variable that we passed. This is what is being given by paper, the other ID. So I passed the session underscore email, okay, the user's email address. So we we'll know the particular user that is being making payments in the URL. So that's why I echo this as email variable, which is gotten from what we defined in the uh top of the page i uh, also pass this variable the delivery i echo the delivery method so i will know how the user wants he his or her products to be delivered to them because why using paypal smart payment button okay user has a field where they can submit their shipping address okay even if you use their paypal platform it will still, still have an address but i need to pass this out to know what the address the user prefers so that's why i have that in the variable so when we head back to uh the transaction iphone completed file and uh, this is what we have here i won't be explaining much on this so endeavor to watch my previous video on how to integrate this okay so this is what i did here when you watch my previous video you know how i got all these variables as well okay then the session email which was passed in that url i got it using global gets php variable i got the session email of the user as well as the delivery variable the delivery method okay now i had to start session here in the middle of the code uh, because uh, the file has no headers so it won't throw any error if we scroll down we see that it's just only scripts because normally the best practice is to start section on top of your page and in, in this there's a namespace here and in namespace you can't start section on top if you do that there will be an error so that's why i had to start it here just to keep us in track of which user is making payments okay so for that since i started the session as well in this page i was able to get the cards product remember the product has been stored in a session of what shopping underscore cart all right and what i did i now encoded the products what i mean by json encode function i converted the products into a string you know the product that is in a session is in an array okay when we convert it to a string i did that because i want to store that in our database if you watch the, the demo session you see that after making payments in the success uh, 
page there was what the table showing the products in which the user made payment of okay which we first in the sources page so i had to use this json underscore encode function to convert that to a string and insert that into a database for example i will show you when we head over to our database this oh we have been logged out okay let's log in again when we head over to our database you can see that uh what was inserted there was more like uh an array string okay so for example the demo i made use of this account for what has henry okay no if we go over to the customer underscore transaction table that is where we have all our transactions stored okay if we go over to that table we can see open that uh see what was stored in uh in the delivery uh from the field you see so this is an array but i had to convert that to a string to be able to store that there okay that is why i have that all right so when we head back this is the query that inserts the values that we want to our customer underscore transaction table paypal payer underscore full name payer email and all that then these variables so if the sql condition is true that means if it was submitted successfully redirect the user towards success.php page all right i have dot dot four slash because where this file is is in a folder the transaction have from completed the files in a folder which is shop files so and this success page is outside that file so that's why i had that then i passed the the encoded word product variable which was which were which has been converted to a string to this url so now when we head over to the sources page so this is the sausage page and this is where the product was displayed okay this uh, sources page the first thing i did here is to start session so after that i included my database connection because i know i will updating the database okay so the two condition that was checked is checked if it is not empty the session shopping cart okay if it is not empty and also if the session the email is if it's not empty so these two condition checks if i have any products in the shopping cart and as well if the user is logged in just like i mentioned in the other series the two sessions value that we are stored in the server is what the shopping cart and if the user is logged in session email okay so if that is true the session underscore email variable is being assigned to this session email okay so this gets the user's email address okay so updating the user's table updates users set the virtual underscore price now i'm in, i'm emptying those fields because i've known the user has made payment so no need storing that having the user to see that so i empty the field by doing virtual underscore price field okay then the former underscore price or as well is supposed to empty the delivery field is also equals to empty where what the email is equal to what this session email so this get the user's email address this is so this will update only this table okay so um variable results archcon database connection this archcon is coming from this database connection then we'll now query this uh, uh, sql so if the result is true that means if this was updated successfully on set the session shopping underscore card so on certain session means destroying it so everything that is in the in the that user's shopping cart will be removed that means the, the user has made payment so we don't need to have those products still stored in the shopping cart all right so that's what that means so if we now scroll down this is where i have the product displayed if you watch uh, the demo version of this tutorial okay so remember in the transaction completed page i passed the encoded product variable in the url so this is where i fetched it i gave it a new variable name of what products 
So using global get variable to get the encoded products. Okay. Now, in order to display that, I need to decode it because it's no longer um, in an array. Okay, if you understand that. So that's why I use JSON that's called decode function, pass this uh, products variable, and also the second parameter was assigned to it was true. Okay. Because when you decode the JSON in PHP using JSON underscore decode, I left the comment here, it will return what data as an object. If you want data as an array, you need to what pass the second parameter as true. So for this to work, because we need it for it to be in an array, so we can be able to display that in our browser, we need to pass it to be true. So that is why I have this product on that list. So using for each loop to fetch all those products, for each product list as what well, product lists so this product underscore list is coming from here as this echo what the product lists image echo the image echo the name of the product the code the quantity and the price these are in what's in a table okay bootstrap table so that is just that so guys um if you learn something new on this tutorial this is the end of the series of the professional e-commerce websites. Please give me a thumbs up. And if you have not subscribed yet, please leave us. Subscribe to the channel, okay? And leave any comments. If you have any questions you want to ask based on this tutorial. If you need the source code, I only send source code to my subscribers. Because my subscribers come first. Alright? So... Thanks for watching. I'm very, very grateful if you follow this series from beginning to this end. Alright, I will see you on the next one.